Min Sung Wang, pleased to have you here. Um, I will change to English now because you will do your presentation in English. Um, I've heard that you, you understand some Dutch. Is that true? Or just a little. Just a little, you say. Okay. But we, we can try. And if you don't understand, we will help you to translate. Um, we talked about the um, uh, corner spot. Case was telling about it. Um, that's one of the places where you were. Come and stand. Yeah. Yes. And then I will give you this microphone. Uh, how did you end up in a corner spot? <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, it was through Case, actually. It was my colleague, Connor Trowinski. We were both mm -hmm. designers. At first, we were just looking for a place to learn to work, as designers like to do. Like an empty office space. Exactly. But um, when Case invited us into door knockers, we had a lovely uh, shore uh, shop front. Mm -hmm. It was very exposed, and we wanted to keep it open and see what we can do with the neighborhood. And one thing led to another, mm -hmm. and now we are very active with working together with people in door knockers uh, as designers. Yeah. yeah, we didn't plan it like that, but okay. it ended up like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you didn't plan to be here? How did you come? Was it Case who invited you? Uh, you mean to the Netherlands? No, this here, this event here. Uh, yeah, it, it was Case and, and, and yeah. Esther. Yeah. 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 And, and did you talk to, through Facebook or did you meet somewhere? I see Case almost every week, okay. yeah. <laughs> That's the personal connection, yes. And you're going to tell about a special kind of workshop that you call breadcrumbs? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I, I will give you this mic, and we have your slides ready, so yeah. about 20 minutes for you. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, my name is uh, Min Sung Wang, and I am a designer from South Korea. I have been educated in Design Academy Aintove, and um, I am here to share some workshops that I do, which I call breadcrumbs. So breadcrumbs is a series of workshops that aims to introduce accessible technology to people who would usually not use such technology. Um, there are many technology workshops, as you all well know. And I myself, I am not a technologist. I am a communication designer. Um, but I have great interest in, let's say, uh, finding scenarios where people can work with technology so they can take it apart and experience it firsthand. And based on that experience, um, decide what to do with modern technology. Um, breadcrumbs comes from the breadboard, and I assume some of you will know that bre a breadboard is a prototyping platform. And um, the idea that you can be hands-on with technology and realize functions and um, interesting situations with technology was what inspired me to try to take that outside of the laboratory, outside of the TU, uh, into the hands of people from children to elderly to, and everyone in between with a wide spectrum. Uh, what I mean by accessible technology is any technology in a given location that is reasonably affordable and accessible. For instance, we have um, 3D printing, which is becoming reasonably affordable and accessible. Uh, rapid prototyping techniques uh, are all over Europe. And also, uh, of course, microcontrollers such as Arduinos and other wearable electronics. Uh, my interest is more in the action rather than the discourse because I have experience with working with technologists and researchers who are very advanced in um, their refinement of technology. And my interest is in more of how we can take that and make it into actions, make it into case studies. So uh, my interest lies in the empirical uh, realities. So what comes out of the laboratories and can trickle down into, let's say, the market and to the internet and uh, what people or teenagers or children can access, those are the ingredients I want to use and do very specific um, uh, activities and see if these are interesting for people and if this can lead to, let's say, citizen participation related to technology. Another aspect is the idea that it's about um, 
using this technology outside of the classroom or outside of our workplace. I'm also not an educator. Uh, my interest lies in what people do with their spare time. So these are activities that we can do you know, over the weekend, after school, maybe in the summer, uh, with children and parents together, and um, see, based on these experiences, can we bring it back into our lives, into our education, and into our future. Uh, my methodology is, goes threefold. First of all, I keep aware of what type of technology is accessible at any given location. Since I'm based in Eindhoven, then I look at technologies based in Eindhoven, but this is not universal. I'm from South Korea, the accessible technologies in South Korea is different, and you can imagine at any given location in the world, it will be different. Another aspect is working together with the experts. Uh, I am not an expert, I work together with experts. And then finally, as a designer, I use this knowledge of technology and working together with professionals, try to formulate interesting activities for people to engage in. Uh, I think you can go through the slides and once more and once more, yeah. So how do I make these workshops is I take um, a type of technology which is accessible and then I think about what to do with it and who to do it with. And also this might sound very, let's say, um, common or very simple. Um, answering these questions helps me figure out what technology is actually interesting for people, especially people who are not technologists, who are not trained to work with technology. Um, there are some examples of, of how I um, categorize my workshops. Um, the most common one I use, I call, is a reactive workshop. The idea of you, you take an input, it goes through a process, and you have an output. However, our technology is very advanced. It still works with that formula. And learning about that formula, that you can take an input, and then through a process, you can create an outcome that is interactive and interesting for you, is the basic of all the workshops, of course, in all modern technology. And I have variations that I use with uh, cloud technology or with wearable electronics, and uh, also with finding ways how different generations of people can work together. Um, so I will show you three case studies or examples of workshops that I do, and maybe this will make it a bit more clear and be a bit more illustrative of what uh, these workshops are about. Um, I will share three. One is called the calculator room. The other uh, is called a glow scarf. And one is a series of spontaneous workshops that he had just done over the last two weeks. Um, the calculator room came from a very simple idea from a colleague of ours, also a case introduced to us, uh, Dolph Nyssen. He did a workshop, uh, he's an architect, and he did a workshop in a basic school, uh, uh, elementary school, to, uh, about what it means to be an architect. And the children did a workshop about making their ideal school. And one of the children uh, came up with an idea that he wanted to make a room into a calculator. Uh, when Dolph shared that idea to us, we, I realized that that sounds very possible. So we uh, tried it out and we learned it is very possible. And we went back to that same school, to the same children to try out this uh, workshop. So what we did was hacking a calculator and making a room into a calculator room. If, that, if you can't really imagine how that works, I will show that to you. And the people we worked together with was um, together with Dolph, was also two industrial designers, and then of course the children from the uh, basic school, the Zonestein. So as you can see, um, I took a HEMA calculator, and together with the children, we took it apart, and we looked inside to see how it works, how you can trigger uh, uh, the buttons, the input, and of course the process is the chip of the calculator. And we made a, gra made a bit graphical to see how if we connect two points in the calculator, you can create an input. And this is just a contact, just, ele just electricity. So it could be a button, but it can be something spatial that you can step on or you can like toss or be more interactive with. And so over the course of this workshop, we worked together with the children to first understand a bit about how a calculator works and then thought about how we can make it the whole room into a calculator. And based on that, in the end, we had a room which was a calculator. And these are some examples of what the children made. 
Um, it was in the middle of the World Cup, so you can see uh, one of the um, uh, numbers were, uh, was that a number? Yeah, I think so. Um, was, was very uh, football inspired. And we have many things that were related to touching, to stomping, to dropping, to throwing. My favorite was actually the one in the bottom right. It doesn't look like much, but it was just a door and it was our equal sign. So every time we, if you want to do an equation, um, the boy had to slam the door for us because the contact point was on the frame and the door. And this was basically what we did with the children. And we learned that, of course, the children enjoyed it um, in terms of it was not just about working with math and technology and, and a calculator that we were doing handcrafts, we were making into something. We also learned from the children about how we could do the workshop better. And um, as a sort of a small, let's say, um, conclusion of this workshop is uh, we found it quite valuable for, to work for th this specific workshop for children between the age of 10 and 12, that right before they go up to secondary school, because it gives them, let's say, a fresh experience and perspective about working with science and math. Uh, the next workshop I want to share with you is called a bioelectrosynth workshop, and these were a series of very spontaneous workshops in the past two weeks. It is slightly related to Dutch Design Week. Um, the workshop was, used, was about creating a very simple uh, analog synthesizer, and it, it, it reacts to anything organic, so to touch the plants, to, to, to water, anything that conducts electricity. And we did it together with Andreas uh, Siegen. He is an engineer who co-founded a Life Patch. He's, he's Indonesian, and he was invited here for Dutch Design Week by Balton Laboratories. And we both working with technology, uh, we realized um, we had an audience. As uh, I just mentioned, we, I work in door knockers. We have a lot of space. We like to do activities. So we just set up one rule and use social media and posters. And every time we get five people that we would do a workshop. And over the past two weeks, uh, we did four workshops with uh, uh, this technology. Um, across the street from Corner Spot, there is a St. Francisco School. It is vacant. Uh, and there are some people occupying at the moment, and uh, also with the help of Case Donkers, we have access to the school. So we just decided to use one of the classrooms and turn it into a laboratory. And over the past two weeks, uh, we've been doing workshops. Uh, we work together with students from the Design Academy, from the TU, um, some people from the neighborhood, and also uh, other people that Balton Laboratories uh, invited to these workshops. And what well, uh, Andreas does very, uh, what's very inter interesting wh about what he does is he takes the basics of technology, engineering, and makes it into something a bit more playful and, and engaging. So you can imagine a circuit board, if you open an old ra um, radio, it's very, let's say, um, uh, technical. But what you see here are all hand-drawn circuits. So all the participants, after learning about the basics of creating a circuit, they drew their own circuit, and based on that, they can make their own synthesizer. And what, also, what we also learned from this is, as long as um, there are people interested in, in, in these types of technology, and it's not about making everyone into a technologist or engineer, but at least a lot of people are willing to, out, to try it out. So there are um, children there, parents there, and of course they didn't come for more advanced tech workshops, they were at least there to try it out for themselves and went home with their own uh, analog synthesizer. Finally, I would like to share a workshop called Glow Scarf. And this is why I'm sharing this is because tomorrow we start Design Week. And this is a workshop that I also host during Dutch Design Week. Um, the idea is because we are working together with uh, Vitalis, a network of elderly homes based in Eindhoven. Um, the idea is to use handcrafts, textile, and embedded um, excuse me, uh, wearable electronics, and see what happens if we uh, mingle with the two. And of course, at the TU, and researchers do very advanced uh, things with wearable electronics, with wearable sensors. This is just the very basics of how we can make a wearable circuit. But uh, based on our previous experience with these workshops, we learned that textile skills is really a binding factor between old skills and new. And 
uh, we want to continue with these workshops to see uh, how far we can go working together with uh, the elderly people, with other people who are more skilled with handcraft textiles and see uh, what we can create together. And so this, we did a pilot at uh, Society Andromeda. It's an uh, elderly community based in Wunsel. And what the ladies told us afterward, afterwards was that they appreciate the workshop in a sense uh, that they were taking advantage of their own knowledge and uh, they could also share that knowledge with us. And once we sort of got through the basics of how you can make a circuit, how you should make sure it shouldn't short, it shouldn't short that the plus should go to the plus, the minus to minus, um, they're using their own handcraft skills to try to figure out how they can intelligently embed it into their own techniques. And that was very inspiring for us because they are much better at textile than we were. So uh, in the end, um, we got some uh, examples of uh, scarves embedded with light, uh, spiraling brooch. And um, this workshop, we would also like to continue to see um, if it's an interesting application of technology and working together as people. Um, being a communication designer, I don't have really a conclusion about these workshops. I'm not saying these workshops will change the world or is the way to go, but I'm very curious to see uh, what happens with it. And working together with researchers and technologists who are very interested in looking for case studies, um, breadcrumb workshops, I am very willing to continue to provide such case studies to see how they can bleed back into the more advanced researches. And being based in a neighborhood uh, in door knockers, working together with people, we also learned that although there is a lot of interest in such, tech such workshops, um, it is a bit more difficult to find proper support to be able to act upon these workshops. Uh, many of the people are working voluntarily to make these workshops happen. Uh, and uh, it's all about sharing knowledge, and that's also a big thing for us at the point to discover how we can um, uh, make these type of workshops more accessible, uh, share it with more people, make it happen more often, uh, also with children, with the elderly, and um, take the experience to see uh, what we can do with uh, modern technology. Thank you. Thanks a lot. No glow scarf, so no My question. My question is, uh, how do you get to this idea to, to do this? Because it's 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 a bit uh, strange to to have ladies who are accustomed to uh, all the ladies who are accustomed to have high tea in the in, in the afternoon learn them to to make a glow scarf. Well, uh, yes, it is unusual, but it's also related to how we work. So if we strip away the technology aspect, it goes back to the corner spot, to our sort of co-creation attitude of working as designers. And if you just add technology to the mix, we can create more activities. So it doesn't really start from the technology, it always starts from the people. And if you, I hope you've noticed that for every scenario, I try to custom tailor it to who we're working together with. And so if we really think about and have a bit of experience of working with our, let's say, target group, then based on that, also using technology, we can make, um, or we can come up with interesting activities. So these ladies weren't afraid of you? Well, um, unfortunately, they're... No, no, no. Well, language-wise, because their Brabant dialect is, was very strong, uh, of course, I had no clue what they were talking about. But I was working together with Asina Kazemi, he's, uh, she's also, he's from the TU, yeah. and um, he told me that uh, just step by step, um, they, once they got the basics, the fundamentals, um, it was um, no problem for them. And the binding factor that we were using textiles really made it comfortable for them. Yeah, and they were way ahead of us uh, pretty soon, in like an hour and a half. Can they, do, can they do it now without your help? The, I don't, the, the brooch... All the ladies, the yes. glow scarf. So what happened was we did a workshop, and then we told the ladies that we'd like to come back in two weeks to, to help give them a hand, and they actually told us no, because uh, they want to do it themselves, help each other out. And when we came back, 
they presented us with these handcrafted uh, objects, and it's, it's their objects, so fortunately I can't share it with you right now, and we have pictures. But it was quite amazing to see that, oh, it's, uh, it's possible, and um, oh, they, can, they can do it without our help. And uh, it only did that one pilot, which is a bit unfortunate. That's why during this design, we want to continue with it to uh, see what the next step could be. Okay, the other two cases were about uh, children in, in school uh, situation. Would you propose this uh, to uh, upscale this kind of uh, workshops in, in school? Well, as I mentioned, I'm a communication designer and I am not an educator or a technologist. And for me, it's always important to work together with other professionals. So, of course, um, it is a beautiful idea to, let's say, upscale it and, and be, let's say, more uh, aggressive in terms of trying to make these activities more available in school. But I have to tell you that is not my expertise. My expertise as a designer is to create compelling act actions. Yeah. And I am always looking for people that I can work together with to, let's say, take such actions in uh, sharing, making it more widespread, making it more accessible, maybe even training the teachers to do it themselves because the calculator one especially, it's so lo-fi. Yeah. If the teachers themselves, they can learn it and they can do it. They can do it. Yeah. So I am open to those op op um, possibilities, yeah. Okay, Th this is the art of robo robotics, huh? Th this, is, this is your, uh, <laughs> your thing, I guess. Yeah, I, I saw that you, you made a photo of every slide that he showed with your phone, yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, I've worked with an, um, an artist in, uh, in Enschede, Edwin Dertin, his name is, and he does in some kind of things the same you did. For the synthesizer project, for example, he did it with a lot of students of um, universities. And do you know each other? Okay, so but you, you you have to talk, I think. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's Any one question for from the audience? No. That's good because we are are an, an, uh, 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 short on time. Thanks very much, uh, Minzo. Yeah.